This video is gonna go over the installation process of your brand new Fleck 5600 SXT water softener. Um, first, I wanna go over what is included in the shipment. It will come in two boxes, two packages. The taller and the heavier one is the mineral tank. It is loaded with the resin in the tank already. And uh, that's the bigger box, the taller, heavier box. The other box is going to be the salt tank or the brine tank. And inside the brine tank will be several goodies there for you. It's going to have the safety float, um, brine well. Um, notice uh, you may or may not have the sticker on there, but the brine line is in, in inside here. So there's a brine line 3 8 outer diameter tube that we'll get to here in a few minutes. Um, they also have the lid in there with uh, an overflow elbow for the salt tank. But also in there will be some other smaller parts. Um, of course, you will have that Fleck 5600 SXT control valve, the metered softer valve um, uh, with the transformer there. It will also have a bypass and a yoke, a male threaded yoke for you to connect your plumbing to. It will have a drain barb for the control valve. It's going to come with this upper basket here. It may be different colors. There's white, gray, tan, I think, and then a red one. Um, really, you can use it if you'd like. You don't have to. Uh, basically, as long as you hook up your softener correctly, water in and water out, we're going to go over that. You would never need this upper basket. So, um, you know, you do what you want with that. But as long as you hook your softener up correctly, you will never need that. And then there is a baggie of small parts. These small parts we'll get into as we connect our uh, brine line to the control valve. We'll go over those parts uh, when we install that. Um, there are some things you will need to bring in order to do the install. Uh, first of all, you just need some hand tools. Um, you know, how, how you connect your plumbing to the softener is kind of up to you, depending on your type of plumbing. Uh, we recommend some flexible hoses uh, for the install that makes it go uh, pretty quick. But you'll just need some hand tools, um, uh, some Teflon tape. You also need some sort of lubrication. Cooking oil does a great job if you don't have any lubrication there. So cooking oil would do well for you. Um, you will need to provide some drain line. This is a very small section of a drain line. It is half inch ID, so that's half inch inner diameter. Um, and this is a flexible, but it is rigid, uh, which is great for drain line. And then you would want to use a hose clamp that is appropriate for that size uh, tubing there for the drain. And of course, we'll go over all of that during the installation. But that is what you will have uh, in your shipment and then what you will need to bring in order to uh, do the install. The next thing we want to do is connect the control valve, the 5600 SXT flex valve, to the top of the tank. And so a couple things to know here, this cap, if you just unthread that cap, you'll see there's a riser tube in there. It's already got the media in there. Remember the resin does not come all the way up. It's usually half to two thirds full. That allows some expansion to happen during the regeneration phase to rinse it out really well. So that's how much resin's generally in there. Uh, the riser tube, you just wanna make sure that's centered um, on the bottom of the control valve. And so when you look on the bottom of the control valve, you will see there's a smaller hole in the middle here. There's an O-ring in there and there's a large O-ring on the outside. You wanna use some sort of lubrication. Uh, like I said, uh, cooking oil works great if you don't have it. Just lubricate each of those O-rings and then you center the riser tube on the bottom of that control valve. Onto the tank there and then you're gonna tighten it. I'm just using one hand to really spin this around to make sure that I don't over tighten it. So I just tighten it until it's snug. I felt it snug up there, so I give it one little little bit more turn like a two-year-old, and that is where I'm gonna leave that I'm not gonna over tighten that control valve. If you over tighten it, then you can cause a crack in the tank or a crack in the valve. You certainly don't wanna do that. Let the large O-ring hold the water back as it's designed and as it will. The next thing you wanna do is connect the yoke and the bypass together. This is the bypass, it's got the two knobs on top. Uh, when you install it, you want them to be in bypass so they're in line with each other just like this. So make sure they're in line with each other there. You're gonna connect it to the yoke. The yoke has male threads on it. We already put two, three wraps of Teflon tape on there. That's all you need to do. Um, and you are gonna connect it. Notice that there are some O-rings here. It's just an O-ring seal and a clip and screw here. You wanna lubricate those O-rings. Then you're gonna fit 
the yoke onto the O-rings there. You may need to loosen up both of those screws and clips, get them loose, and then sneak them together there just by pushing them together after you. You use a regular flathead screwdriver or you could use a quarter inch nut driver on those screws. And when you do this, you wanna make sure the clips are totally encompassing the yoke and the bypass, making sure the clip is sitting straight along the edge of both of those. And then when you tighten that screw, do not over tighten it. The whole purpose of the screw is just to keep the clip from coming separating from there to separate the yoke and the bypass. So just snug on the screw is good enough. Uh, the O-ring seal, the O-ring will hold the water back. And uh, so just use that uh, regular screwdriver or nut driver and just snug up that screw and the one on the other side as well. And now we will be ready to apply the bypass to the back of the control valve. The back of the control valve has the same system here, clip and screw and O-rings. So you will connect those the same way as you just connected the yoke to the bypass. We do have these screws only snugged up and you'll see there is a little bit of play that's designed that way. So when you plumb it in, there's a little bit of play there. Obviously you don't want it torquing up or down or twisting the bypass when you connect your plumbing, but there is a little bit of play there that is designed. Do not go and over tighten those screws. Next, we're gonna connect our main water supply coming in and out. Um, we've already put some Teflon tape on these male threads here and we're going to show you again the, the installation with these flexible water lines. One reason why is there's a little rubber washer and plastic washer in a lot of these. That helps get that watertight seal. So that's what we're going to choose to use here. Very important to point out as well the arrows that are on the bypass here. So this is the arrow coming in. There's an arrow over there pointing out, speaking in terms from where the softener is. This is the supply water coming in from the city or from your well pump. Make sure this is your inlet coming in and then your outlet over there on the other side going out. So if you're facing the front of the control valve, the right side is the incoming water. The left side is the outgoing water from the system. So you definitely want to make sure that you do that. It is very easy to pull an old system out, put a new one in and assume it's the same and totally forget. So it's very easy to do. So just keep in mind, pay attention closely to the arrows. That is the water flow direction. We're just gonna use those flexible water lines and just snug them up here. Um, you may use a wrench just to snug those up a little bit, uh, but again, you don't need to over tighten things. Uh, so we're gonna do that now. So obviously you need to turn off the water to your house and however you cut into your pipes or connect it there, maybe you have a water softener loop um, however you do that, obviously you're going to have the water turned off to there while you do that um, and while you're connecting these. And at the same time, what I would say is make sure that your unit is to bypass. So if these are looking like railroad tracks to you here, parallel with each other, it is in service. So we want to go ahead and turn that to bypass by twisting those. Um, and you can see the little arrow there showing which way to go to bypass, but we want to make sure they're in line with each other, stopping the water flow coming in and water flow going out so the unit is in bypass right now as we're doing the rest of the installation. Next, we're going to install the drain barb and uh, we're getting just one or two wraps, two or three wraps of Teflon tape. It installs on the back side here and there's female threads there and so you're going to just thread that on. I would suggest hand tightening and then make sure it is snug, but you definitely want to use Teflon tape on that and then just snug that up with a wrench, um, but not too much at all. Just barely snug is enough. You know, plastic drain barb, plastic housing, make sure that you don't over tighten that and crack the housing or the drain barb. And then we're going to install our drain line. Again, I'm showing just a small section of a drain line as an example uh, with a hose clamp. Um, so just put the hose clamp on the hose and then you're going to just push that on to the drain barb, your drain line, however you do this. You're just going to push that onto the drain barb here and then use the hose clamp to just snug that up so you don't have any leaks. You're going to run that drain line, which is half inch ID, which is inner diameter, to a drain. That drain needs to be at least one and a half inches in diameter. And so that's again, one and a half inches in diameter drain pipe so you run your drain line now it will come out under pressure so it will wiggle uh, but you do not want to just jam the tube down into the drain um, you want to make sure you have an air gap to allow to make sure there is no back pressure at all on that system 
so again, that's a one and a half inch drain pipe that you're running your drain line to and make sure you have an air gap. Follow all your local rules and laws about draining and all those things. Different parts of the country may be different, so it is up to you to follow those rules. It is time to connect uh, the control valve to your salt tank and the safety float technically. Uh, so set up the brine tank and all of that. And where you connect that to is this brass fitting on the side here is gonna be connected with the brine line. We're gonna show you how all that works uh, right now. First of all, remember inside, inside your salt tank, your brine tank, if you take the cap off the brine well, your brine line hose and a little baggie is in there. So this is your drain barb for the overflow elbow there. So we'll have that in there and then also get your brine line out and you can even see um, the, the safety float is in there as well. You can see the stainless steel uh, male threaded nipple sticks through. So there's one small hole on this side of the brine well and there's two larger holes on this side. Uh, so the stainless steel there, it may be connected for you already, but if not, the stainless steel side goes through there with a little stainless nut, and that's how you hold the safety float to the brine well. In order to connect the brine well, the bottom hole on that brine well, those two holes are going to line up with the outside of your tank here, the bottom hole there, as you can see it line up. You're going to put your overflow elbow through there. And uh, the best way to do that is to just move this elbow, that's an O-ring there, so you can kind of move that. Hold the nut, hold the nut on the inside here, and then line it up. Put the male threads through there, and then just snug it up. As you can see, the drain barb here uh, for the overflow elbow. If you had a hard time putting your hand through there to hold it there, you can. Obviously, you can take this nut off, pull the float out, that comes out and then put that overflow elbow, drop the flow back in and put it through there. So you can obviously do that. We just find it easier to, uh, to just slide it out of the way and just put that there. But anyway, now we're just gonna loosen this nut on the top of the elbow here. The top of the elbow, just loosen that up quite a bit. You're gonna take, you're gonna take your brine line. Uh, I believe it has one of those uh, brass fittings there, the brine line stabilizers. If not, you'll have it in the baggie there and you're just feeding it through the salt tank which is then going to come in there and if you loosen that nut enough you'll be able to just push that tube in you don't have to push it in too far just push the tube into that and uh, it's a compression fitting there and then just snug up that compression fitting here i don't even think you'll need a wrench on that just use uh, just finger tighten that up there and that's how you connect to uh, the safety float on the brine tank side this overflow elbow is there to remember to hold the brine well um, to the salt tank. Lots of people don't even use that to a drain. Um, if you have a floor drain near, then it's nice. It's just half inch ID, so you could use the same type of drain line, but do not tee that in to the existing drain line as this is just you know gravity drain, um, the one out of the top of the control valve, that's pressure from your incoming house. house. So don't tee those in, but if you have a floor drain near, it's nice to hook that up as well. There's one variation that may deviate from the brine tank setup that we just went over. Two things. One, the brine line may not be in uh, with the brine well. It may be just in the tank. Um, it may just be there, not in the brine well. It may be uh, like a different color than black. We showed a black one, but it's just a 3 8 inch diameter tube. But, so it may not be in there. It may just be in the brine tank itself. And also, it may not get installed in the corner, it may get installed on the side. You would see the holes that would be on the side, but that's the only variation. So not much difference as far as how it connects to the float and all of that and how it connects to the brine well itself, but it may just be on the side of the tank. Just be aware that there are some variations to that. Now that we have the brine line attached to the safety float, the salt tank, uh, we are now gonna connect the other end to this brass fitting here on the right side of the control valve here. Those, this is where you use the little brine line pack here. Um, you'll see these four small pieces. This stabilizer, stabilizer may or may not be in the tube already. Uh, if not, it's right there and it's just, it just goes in the end. And we're gonna show you how to do that. This is a little screen here. We suggest that you don't use that. Um, it ends up clogging, uh, causing more issues than, than necessary. So we recommend they just throw that away. There is a, another screen in the injector housing here that does get backwashed with the unit that is doing the same thing. So that's what we recommend you use. 
So you first put the brass nut onto the brine line. Then you put this white ferrule fitting. The white ferrule fitting is tapered. You can see that it's tapered. So the tapered end points is gonna to point towards the control valve. So the brass nut first, then the white ferrule fitting. And then if the brine line stabilizer is not in there, just shove the brine line stabilizer in there. And then that's when you'll raise the nut up and just tighten that onto that brass fitting there. No Teflon tape or pipe dope on that. You don't need it. Um, so just connect that there. You do probably wanna use a wrench on that just to make sure it is snug, but you do not need to over tighten it. Before we go over the startup procedures, uh, just verifying everything is, is first uh, connected properly. So you have your incoming water on the right side coming into the softener, following the arrows on the bypass and out to the rest of your home. You have your drain line. Again, this is a shortened drain line for demonstration purposes. Um, but your drain line is attached, it's half inch ID, but it is going to a drain that is at least one and a half inches in diameter. Um, you have your brine line attached with the compression fitting here, attached to your salt tank. I put the cap back on where the safe float is. All that is attached. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, turn the unit back to in service now. Like we said before, your bypass has been in the off position, hopefully, if you followed the instructions. So turn on the water back to the system. Water will flow then through the bypass and out to the rest of the house now. Um, but we wanna go ahead and open the bypass, okay? We're gonna open that. We wanna open this and slowly open it over the course of five or seven seconds. You're gonna hear water rushing into the tank and all of that, but don't crank that open quickly. Let the water just uh, slowly, kind of gradually gain momentum. And then once you do that, then you can turn the other one as well. Same type of thing. And you just wanna run, run that until the water fills up into the tank. So just open the bypass slowly. Even while that is um, filling up with, with water, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the control valve in. It just plugs into a regular 110 outlet. Um, so you can go ahead and plug that in. Once you plug the valve in, we wanna go ahead and set the time of day to 12.01 p.m. And again, we have to set the time of day to 12.01 p.m. to get into the master programming. And then when we're all done programming, we'll set the current time of day and we'll show you how to do that. So in order to set the time of day, just use the up or the down arrow key. So in this case, um, we're gonna go down. Sometimes you gotta hold it in a little bit. You'll see there's a PM indicator in the top right hand corner. And when you see the 12.01 PM and the TD, you tap the diamond shaped button once and that'll get it to where the TD falls off. Okay, so you have the time of day, 12.01 PM and no TD. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the up and down arrow keys together at the same time for about 10 seconds. So I'm holding those in. We are looking for DF Gal. You have DF Gal. Go ahead and tap the diamond button. Next is the VT DF16 or 1B. CTFD is good. NT1, C24. Now this is where you put the capacity in. So if you have a 32,000 grain, you would just use the up arrow key set to 32. If you have the 48,000 grain, whatever size system you have, you're gonna set that up with the C48 and that's the little times 1,000 for 48,000. Tap the diamond button. This is where you set your hardness. So if you're on city water, knowing the hardness in grains per gallon from your city, you would just adjust that. Um, on well water, sometimes if you have iron in the water, we wanna add to the hardness. So for every one part per million of iron, you wanna add five to the hardness. So um, if your hardness is 15, but you have two parts per million of iron, let's just say, then you would go two times five is 10. So 10 plus 15 is 25. Again, you take your hardness and then you add five to the hardness number for every one part per million of iron. So if you're on well water with 15 grains per gallon of hardness and two parts per million of iron, 25. And then when you get the hardness setting set, tap the diamond button again, RSRC, the RC 150, DO 14 on city water. If you're on well water, go ahead and move that down to seven. RT two o'clock, this is what time of day it's gonna regenerate, that's totally up to you. This is the default setting. Backwash 10, that's good. BD 60, RR 10. And then the BF right now comes default at 12. 
So if you have a 32,000 grain softener, you want to set that BF to 6. If you have a 40,000 grain softener, set it to 8. If you have a 48,000 grain, set it to 10. If you have a 64,000 grain, set that to 12. And then tap the diamond button. And then your FMP 0.7, that's correct there. Tap it one more time, you're back to the normal operation. So according to your program, you see that 1770 flash up on the screen. For this programming, that's how many gallons of water until the next backwash. That number will count down as you use water, um, and then it will switch to the time of day as well. When you're all said and done with the program, you just want to set the time of day. Um, let's just pretend it's, it's uh, 12.45 p.m. So we just raise the time of day here. Whatever time of day it is there, go ahead and set the time of day. Tap the diamond button, and you have the system programmed. Now what we want to do is we do want to do a backwash. Um, we have already have our plumbing where it's in service. We have it plugged into the wall. We have it programmed. And in order to do a backwash, you just hold in this diamond-shaped button here for about five seconds. And the first thing you see will be BW. See four dashes, BW. And now it's going to go through a regeneration phase. Now ours obviously is not hooked up to actual water, but during this BW, you will hear water rushing to the drain, out the drain line. So um, just let it do this full regeneration process. It takes about an hour and a half. And um, it's going to go through four stages, BW, then BD, then RR, and BF. And while it's sitting here in the BW right now, what you want to do is go ahead, take the lid off there, go ahead and put at least one bag of salt in the salt tank, um, and then add one or two gallons of water. And you just want to have that done. You know, this is going to count down from 10 minutes in the BW. Just make sure you have the, the at least the one or maybe two gallons of water in the salt tank uh, before that time is up, and then let it go through this whole process, okay? At the end of this, whole thing, the hour and a half or so, it's going to put back in there a different amount of water. It'll be more water than one or two gallons. It'll put back in a different amount, but the right amount according to your settings that you have on your softener that we just went through. So after it's done that manual regeneration, then remember to run that tap that's close to your system, the cold water only until it's clear and there's no air in there. Um, so remember to do that. But after that, um, you know, you've got the one bag of salt in your salt tank already. We want you to keep at least one bag of salt in that tank at all times. Other than that, you could fill it all the way up, but make sure there's at least one bag of salt in that tank at all times. Um, but again, um, do that, uh, run that tap that's close there, run it until it's clear, get all the air out. And then keep in mind, it does take two, sometimes three weeks to get the full effects of soft water through your house. So don't panic day one if you test your water and there's still some hardness there. Um, it does take some time for two reasons. One, we wanna make sure that resin gets fully charged with a couple good regenerations. And then also, you know, all of the water that's in your plumbing, in your hot water heater and all of that um, could possibly be very hard. So um, just keep in mind, give it a couple weeks, but it will begin to soften right away. But to get the full effects and the full efficiency out of the unit, it could take a couple weeks. But we would love to help answer any of your questions along the way uh, during installation, purchasing, uh, programming, anything you got here at A Plus Water. We love to help our customers. So if you bought from us, please do not hesitate to give us a call at 877-477-5452. Again, that phone number is 877-477-5452. Thanks and enjoy your water.